twice and you've done it. Okay. Yep. And you mentioned the Arab Springs twice. Is there something that we need to know particularly? Or Yeah, that okay. wasn't ended up being put on the first exam. The this exam, the Arab Spring is on it. You have to know that video and the lecture I did. So that is essentially using quantitative methods in order to understand um, why the Arab Spring happened. So that is kind of an introduction. I use it also in my statistics class um, on uh, a kind of an introduction to quantitative research. He's trying to ferret out the reasons for it now. Do you need to agree with him? Of course not. But at the same time, you do have to understand he's using a method and it's called, that's why this is empirical inquiry, uh, quantitative method. So very good question for the first one. Um, and quantitative methods, I might as well just jump into it now then, is the idea of using large N data. So that's going to be different from interpretive methods and qualitative ethnography, et cetera. So on this exam, what you will need to know, I'll just start off with quantitative research since you did begin with a, a, a very good question. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll begin, oops, I got to admit that person. Thanks everyone for coming up. Amber, good to see you again. I hope everything's going well with you. Um, you basically have three, mm -hmm. a few different methods here. The most difficult I think people find is quantitative. That is large N data. So I kind of use that Arab Spring video in order to understand what Bar Yam is trying to do. He's using statistical methods, which you don't completely need to know at this level, but in order to see the variables of the that caused the Arab Spring. Some people don't agree with them. I've had debate. That's not the important. <laughs> the important thing here isn't whether you agree or not. The question is, he comes then with the different variables called independent variables causes and those happen to be food prices basically allowing ethanol mm -hmm. to flourish throughout these you know different uh countries displaced regular goods and then you because they were using it for sugar corn etc for ethanol because you can make more money and food prices rose that then cause the Arab Spring. Whether you agree with that or not is a different story, but that is exactly what he's trying to do is use statistical methods. Now for this exam, you have to understand the difference between qualitative and statistical methods. Statistical methods are large N studies, like we saw with the ice cream data set. So an ice cream data set is interesting because it's easy. Everybody understands ice cream, right? My sugars are high. I don't really eat ice cream, but most people like ice cream. So that is on the on the test. What is the independent variable and the dependent variable in the ice cream data um, lecture? That is the dependent variable. The result is the consumption of ice cream. The independent variable causes a price, um, temperature, and uh, income of the people. So are they statistically significant? Why is that important? Well, if you own an ice cream shop and the temperature goes up, you wanna know if the consumption of ice cream goes up. If you raise the price of ice cream, does ice cream dis uh, uh, consumption go down? And that's what's interesting about statistical methods. Even now in a time of inflation, even though prices were rising, people mm -hmm. thought that we were going to go into a recession because less people are going to buy things, but it actually didn't happen. So that's an interesting thing. So there seems to be no correlation relationship between the inflation of prices and people not buying things. That's statistical methods. So that's very important uh, to understand uh, for this. So you'll need to know that. And um, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, um, no, so, this is your class. Go ahead. So for um, in the lecture about statistical or statistic methods and statistics, you had said that um, statistically significant means that it is over like 50% uh, likely to happen. But then in, um, in your data set in our studio, the 
data for that one of the ice cream things it was like 0.49 and then you were like okay so it's statistically significant so I was just confused on like why that is yeah and we're gonna need to know that I I don't recall saying anything about 50%. I'd have to go back, but I'm sure it's true. I know you're a great student. You really watch the videos. Uh, but I, I don't remember saying that, nor what it would be applied to. What is statistically significant? And this will be important if you take a, a statistics class. I won't necessarily ask it in this one, but anything of the p-value, probability value of being lower than 0 0.05 in the social sciences is considered statistically significant. That means that there is a relationship and these things are happening, not necessarily by chance, but because of the independent variable, whatever it is. So in the case of ice cream or the Titanic, the Titanic is a great one, particularly what's going on now. Uh, I'm pretty sure people, everybody knows that, you know, what happened. Well, not everyone, I guess, if you're working hard and all that stuff, but it's been in the news about the people going down, trying to see the Titanic, and then it got lost. Very sad. But at the same time, they were paying $250,000 a seat. That's insane, you know. Uh, but I'm going to digress. But think of the statistical significance of the, the Titanic data set I did. It was very significant. That is point lower than 0 0.05 on gender and class. That means you were more likely to die dependent on your gender and dependent on your class. So men were more likely to die than women. And what a surprise. I don't think you have to be a Marxist to guess. Class, if you were in the lower class, you were more likely to die than if you were in the higher class. That's what statistical significance is saying. And it's a it, we use 0 0.05 for the probability. Anything lower is statistically significant. So uh, I don't recall exactly those those points, but those points will not be uh, uh, on it. I'll have to go back and check or something. But thank you, Natalie. Those were good questions. Uh, but what else do you have? For these anything? Anyone? Natalie, Amber, Michelle, Brislin. I actually oh, had a question on what was going to be asked about the boogeyman and Lee Atwater. Yeah, that's an excellent question. I, I actually like that a lot. That is not quantitative methods. That is more interpretive methods. Mike Dukakis in that is just a person. And Lee Atwater, he was so brilliant uh, at creating identity and meaning to things. So if you watch it, Mike Dukakis becomes, you know, the L word, liberal. Uh, you know, he's weak on crime, the Willie Horton ad. Uh, he's weak on defense. Uh, you know, all of these things. And you notice like he doesn't support the death penalty. What happens if your wife was raped, which is a weird question, uh, in my opinion. So what happens is, is Lee Atwater uses like race, crime, fear, etc., in order to make Mike Dukakis into this big, lack of a better word, wimp, right? And this is very, very uh, 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 just prevalent in politics. Trump uses nicknames in order to do this as well, right? Sleepy Joe, all this stuff. And this isn't statistical. This is like more cognitive, emotional, meaning, what an umbrella term I would use is interpretive methods. And that is very, very interesting because we see that in all these commercials. So when you look at a commercial like um, Paul Wellstone, right? This reflected interpretive methods because it's stressed. If you if you really saw, if you watched it, the discourse, he said he was a teacher, not a professor. Um, yeah, all the other things that he said during it. And someone brought up a good point, how there was like, uh, I think I forget what class it was in, but we watched it, how it is, he was so poor that you could hear like people beeping and all this stuff in the background. He That was all interpretive methods in the sense that he used imagery, discourse, etc., in order to get people on his side. He's long dead. He was uh, killed. But it has nothing to do with like, say, cause and effect, ethnography, etc. The same thing goes with, um, yeah, I ask a question, generally speaking, on the political ads, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The ad, if you're going to use what we call positive research, are the independent variables. That is, you can take people, right, have them watch the ad and see whether or not 
their opinions change. In that kind of positive risk research, it would be considered the ad independent variable, the cause. And then your opinion, say, Amber, your opinion of a candidate would be the dependent variable. So does this cause an effect? But when we analyze the question, the, the, the ads themselves, like Willie Horton and other things, the question is, you know, how do they use meaning, race, fair? I mean, Willie Horton, obviously, being African-American, you know, obviously he was a bad guy, but still they kind of use that fair at the time in the ads and that's more interpretive methods. So they, they, that's good. Uh, but all those wedge issues and stuff like that, pure, you know, um, interpretive methods, guns, burning of the flag, death penalty, you know, things that are important to a certain degree, but like, you know, no one's, I mean, burning the flag isn't like the most important, you know what I mean? It's like I, I, people are more concerned about, you know, their kids going to school, you know, making money, etc. Those are called wedge issues in campaigning, but they're very um, useful in these things. Uh, let me see. And I got another one. Oh, yeah. Attaching weak connotations to Michael Dukakis. That's basically interpretive methods. Um, Edward Bernay also tortures of freedom. That's interpretive methods. That's very good. Watch it. How do you get women to smoke? You link a positive meaning to smoking. That's why, you know, it's interesting too. interpretive methods is using commercialism, all this stuff, because men would never drink beer, light beer, but then they had football players on TV. Oh, light beer is cool. See, the meaning of things matter. Good questions. What else do we have? What else do we have? Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, with interpretive methods, could you say that it's something that elicits emotion? Uh, could you repeat that? I'm sorry. Um, with interpretive methods, could you say that it's something that elicits emotion? Oh, yeah. Emotions, meaning, identity, all that stuff that a lot of times quantitative research has trouble, uh, uh, you know, um, operationalizing. That's it really gets into that identity, meaning Trump with the coal hat, if you remember the 2016 election, all those imagery that we see are very, very important. And that's what they focus on. Movies you know, things like that. So yeah, definitely all of that is part of interpretive methods. I have another question. Go ahead. Linear regression. Yeah, uh, and someone asked that. I'm not sure if it was you on the thing. I would just say re regression is just, linear is when you're using all quantitative variables. I don't ask that, but you do have to know the different variables in um, the... Uh, data set. So when we do regression with ice cream consumption, uh, you know, one of the independent variables in regression analysis where we're looking for the relationship is price, income, and temperature. Those are all what we call independent variables causes. The dependent variable is the consumption of ice cream. So does, you know, and let's say you own something. If I keep ra ra yeah, raising the price of ice cream, right, will sooner or later the consumption decrease. Now, according to that data set, it wasn't statistically significant, but when I did it, it did go down. And that's important for business people to know. You know, how much can you raise prices before people stop consuming what you have? But I mean, in this environment, it's so ironic. It goes against like, you know, quantitative economics. It's like, it keeps rising, rising, but people keep buying and buying. I hope people aren't in debt. Good question. Just for my truck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's good. If you only have like one thing like that, that's that's you're 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 doing well. Uh, and I did stick in there in my things that I did in uh, in in San Francisco and and um, what is it, San Diego, the kissing statue and Pancho Villa. That again is interpretive methods. You know, uh, Bronte. Uh, how do you pronounce your name, Bront or Bronte or? Sorry, it's Bronte. Bronte mentioned about emotion. That's exactly what this is about. Pancho Villa has a very strong emotion to a lot of Mexicans. But in the United States, he was considered a bandit, a terrorist, etc. That is interpretive methods, right? What, what identity, what intersubjective understanding do we have? So Pancho Villa to many is a bandit, but to others, he's a hero. And that food was great. So I suggest you go there. And the kissing statue too. 
That is so amazing how meaning changes. For years, the kissing statue represented peace, right? After World War II, if you saw the video. But then it's so interesting. Hey, wait a minute. That woman was taken without her consent. Is that sexual harassment? Should we get rid of the statue? I haven't read the um, discussion board answer, so I'm really excited to see. So that's really interesting how meaning changes over time, like a tattoo. Tattoos were really bad, and now they're in style. Right now, everyone has a tattoo, so it doesn't even matter. But it's interesting how the kissing statue in research methods was, you know, peace, end of World War II, etc. But now other people reevaluate it, just like the Civil War statues and everything else. Wait a minute, this represents something bad. And, and it's interesting how meaning changes over time in politics. So the kissing statue, good or bad? Does it represent peace or sexual harassment? I don't know. That's going to be up to you. But that's interpretive methods. And there is a movement to put it in a museum or get rid of it. But it's massive if you've ever seen it. It's massive. I don't know how they're going to be able to do it. I've never seen the Civil War statues up uh, close. So uh, not that I remember. I've been there. Uh, So, you know, that's I don't know how big they are. But people say we should put them in a museum. So that's interpretive methods in a a nutshell. Just like you said, emotion, you know, and everything else. Mm -hmm. What else? What else? So grounded theory is just basically going into a study without any like background knowledge of what exactly you're doing. good. You said it. That that is exactly what happened in uh, Secrets of the Tribe, right? They don't know anything that's going on. Did you, if you watch the whole thing, did you see how bad it got? The guy like married this really young girl from the young. This is this is all the ethics and the quiet rage is all about ethics as well. Uh, 100%, Michelle, um, that's exactly what grounded theory is. You go in with no theory, no idea, and you let the data speak to you. And then it gets into deeper and deeper things that we're not going to get into if you do later, like a PhD or master's. But that's what they did. They went in and the research question was, why are these people fighting? And he came to the conclusion, women, and then other people came to another conclusion, another alternative hypothesis that it was for meat and protein. So um, that's an interesting study. That that uh, Secrets of the Tribe has everything. Interpretive methods as, as well. Uh, the Yamamomi people, you know, uh, like Sting said, you know, this kind of social construction where it's like they're the best people in the world. They're peaceful. The what the Mormon Tabernacle Choir is singing about them. Or are they a warring, fierce people? It's a battle of of meaning. Uh, I don't buy into that thing about how, you know, all, it's one group of people anyway, indigenous or anywhere, are completely peace and loving because no one's really peace and love. Uh, you know, there's always war. There's always conflict and stuff like that. But did uh, Shagnon, that's the researcher, kind of blow it up to sell his book and stuff like that? That's another story. But that's an interest that that relies on ethnography, literally going to a place like Amber did, right? Eastern Europe, uh, and and learning about it, right? By firsthand experience. That's what ethnography is. That's why, you know, you got to get out of your house. You got to kind of do something. I know we all work, but, you know, you do it. You, that's ethno- eh, ethnographic research. So would that be considered a controlled experiment? No, that the control experiment is more the, um, well, one, the Marjorie Taylor Greene video where I do the hair thing. And then, you know, how do you know if something's working? You Like the COVID vaccine, you have to do an experiment to control groups. But if I was going to apply it to a documentary, it would be quiet rage because they are actually doing a real human experiment. And that's great to get into it. I did another video on that just to, as practice over by Alcatraz. The, the Remember, the independent variable are the roles the people are in, right, if you watch it. And then the dependent variable is the behavior. And what the... Um, scal- the this guy's a little scurrilous. He's, <laughs> he, you know, he wanted these results. But uh, what he was trying to measure was do people kind of get broken down in prisons and do, you know, uh, the guards go a little crazy and things like that. So that's a real life experiment. Uh, Should we be able to do those things? It has ethics, everything else. Um, You know, that's going to be on there. Just know the independent dependent variable of that uh, and understand that, you know, it does uh, consist of an experiment. 
And mm-hmm. also, let's see ethnography, because I got a question on ethnography. Yeah, the on the ground lectures are ethnography where I was in Colombia, Nicaragua. And if you've had me before, you've seen other things. Uh, obviously, um, uh, Secrets of the Tribe is ethnography. Um, exp- all I want for experiment and control groups, you to know is that, you know, the experiment gets the independent variable uh, and then uh, the control group doesn't because the control group is is the one that you're supposed to um, compare it to. So a good example of experiment control groups are the COVID vaccination. You give one group the COVID vaccination, another not a, a vaccination. See if the people with the vaccination say are less inclined to get COVID. That's very controversial right now. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> Justice of the grave. If you read that, just the abstract, you know that that's like, you know, in Uganda, that's ethnography. Jesse Helms, that reflected more interpretive methods showing that, um, you know, critical race theory, all that stuff. Uh, because basically you have, you know, the, the imagery of a African-American man taking a job from a from a um, white person. Uh, and that's what critical race theory is. I don't think people know what it is. It's basically kind of so- creating an environment of against something, whatever that something is. Good questions here. What else do we have? What else do we have? So, so if going back. Oh. I was just going to ask for a quiz. Is it just modules four through six that exactly. are on the? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I won't go back. It'll be just that. No paradigms, none of that. Bronte, you had a question? Yes. Um, with whenever you were in R&R studio, you said something about how we need to know how to do this. I've never taken that classes. Do we just need to know, like, the percentages that you were talking about. Yeah, you just exactly. So I didn't mean to cut you off. I just don't want to take too much time because people might have to go. Yeah, that you don't have to do it. You know, on the test. That would be brutal. You do if you take me for statistics, you'll have to run it. But it's fun. It's it's there's a lot of points. You learn how to run it to make graphs and all this stuff. Uh, it's actually quite valuable. And that's why when you get into the statistics, yeah, statistics and law, it's very important if you want to study law. A lot of people want to study law. Um, but yeah, you just have to understand, oh, what's an independent dependent variable? You know, what's regression? All regression really is, is looking at the relationship of different variables. See if, say, an independent variable is causing the dependent variable or there's a relationship, et cetera, and then making cool graphs and all that stuff. So that's all you'll have to know. But you'll have to know, like, how does it differentiate from, say, qualitative methods? Qualitative methods is more ethnography, on the ground. Some of these methods mix, but uh, just for this class, we're going to separate them, like ethnography, living there, um, you know, interpretive methods, meaning, you know, how we kind of create socially construct a situation like Mike Dukakis, um, you know, the political ads, many were like uh, interpreter because, you know, Math and McSally keep on talking about the Iraq war. The Iraq was not very popular now. So maybe that would have gone over well in different times because I really think the commercials are well done, Math and McSally, if you watch them. Uh, she lost twice. Why? I mean, there's something more there. Those commercials didn't put her over the top like they thought, you know, being a fighter pilot, et cetera, because the world's different now. The Afghan war and Iraq war are not popular, whereas as I'm being I'm a little older than you people. When we went to those wars, they were extremely popular at the time. So, it's, again, that's like a little interpretive methods because, you know, meaning kind of changes over time. We're a less militarized, I think, gung ho uh society right now which puts a conundrum with the um issue of um the uh russia but we are got to talk about that another time uh see we could get in a lot of different things here so what else what else and then i'm going to go down the list in the exam let me see here we go uh itself which i hope you can't see so basically you get questions right there's a lot there's 28 there's a lot of points in this class. So that's the thing. You got to first know basic quant, right? It's large N, you know, ice cream consumption, you know, what are the independent variables? I went over that uh, price, income and temperature all might affect the um, 
the uh, consumption, which is the dependent variable. Regression analysis is just looking. This is a good time to kind of get used to it. Uh, relationship between these variables and the Arab Spring, right? Video and research reflected quantitative research. Quantitative is statistics I use to not, uh, interchangeably. But if you watch that video with Bar Yam, it's all quantitative research, right? So you've got to kind of understand that. And then you kind of have to understand, you know, which is kind of positivist, quantitative, you can use it, is like how you set up experiment and control groups. The political ads in these would be the independent variable because they get, the experiment group gets the political ad, whereas the control group doesn't. So who's going to be the presidential nominees <laughs> that we'll talk about? Let's say it's Trump and RFK is jumping in. So let's say these two people are running, Trump with the Republicans, RFK Jr. for the Democrats. What their teams often do is set up these experiment and control groups and show them commercials and say, like, the Trump group will say, do you like this commercial? Does it make you like Trump more? And that's what they do. So and then they'll give the other group, you know, nothing or something else to watch and then see if the people who got the Trump commercial like him more. Right. Or like RFK last, whatever they're trying to measure. But the ad itself is the independent variable in these experiment and control groups. They're kind of cool. You set them up, you get a bunch of people who are sitting on the fence, meaning you they don't know who they're going to vote for, and you have them watch this commercial and see if it increases their desirability to vote for Trump, right? So that's, that's, that's very important to kind of understand. So that experiment control groups goes into that positivist type of thing. Uh, the same thing goes, let's take a look at Quiet Rage. Uh, that was an experiment. We had independent variables, the roles of people, and then the dependent variable, the behavior. And the two attributes of the, you know, one was a guard and the other was a, um, a prisoner. That was a really good, uh, 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 thing because it really showed a real experiment going on with real people. And they were pretty traumatized by that. So, you know, it was pretty interesting. And remember the Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, video, the dependent variable, of course, is hair color, right? That's the result. Does the hair color change with the dye of your hair? Um, so that's very uh, important. For, and that's like the most for. And I do ask a question about statistics and law. Uh and, you know, during the um, Titanic data set. So the independent variable there is basically class and gender. That's what we're looking about, right? It's in the lecture, uh, statistics and law, or watching the thing on the Titanic data set, I, I bring them up in those two places. What you have to know is what's an independent variable? Well, the Titanic is very interesting because of what's going on now. And what they've come to the conclusion, well, I did in, when I ran the data, was that both class and gender proved to be uh, predictive variables in why people would drown, right? I mean, it's not like every man was going to be killed or every person in, in, in low class, but there was definitely a statistical relationship between those. Um, let's take a look. That's the more quantitative stuff here. Boo, 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 boo. So then what would be interpretive? Well, that kind of stands in stark contrast. Uh, the, the, the kissing statue on Pancho Villa, because we're dealing with meaning, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the, um, the, do st oh, the, uh, secrets of the tribe to the extent to which we, we talk about staying the Mormon, Mormon, what is it? Tabernacle choir who are trying to create the image, anything that has image, emotion, meaning that's interpretive methods. Uh, you know, Willie Horton ad that was basically interpretive methods like critical race theory, etc. Um, let's see what else. Do, do, do. So we're not gonna take up too much of your time. Uh, what else? We had interpretive methods. <clears throat> Paul Wellstone, that was very interpretive methods that 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 um, commercial because of his discourse. I love how he refuses. Why do you think he said teacher instead of professor? Why do you think that word is better? 
puts them down on the, um, you know, puts them down on the playing field with the average guy. Oh, yeah. It, it's like, you know, wait, what, when you say you're a professor, people, oh, geez, ivory tower, you know, liberal, right? You know, you're, you're, you're inculcated. I've had, literally had parents because I have little kids. So you meet the parents and they'll say, oh, you're the one inculcating and brainwashing my kids <laughs> to be liberals. Um, they say that all the time. So he was brilliant by never mentioning he was a professor because that's what you have to do. You know, in Rome, Minnesota is not liberal. They're like more conservative guns. It said, that's why if you watch that video, watch it again. It's only like a minute long. He's out there showing himself with a farm. His family is dressed like Mennonites, like in a gothic horror movie, you know, like no makeup, no anything. Very, play you know, very, you know, I, I know some of you might be from the Midwest and know more than me, but, you know, like, you know, he was really appealing to the rural people. He talked about the rivers and all this stuff, or lakes, whatever, Minnesota. Has. <laughs> I've never been to Minnesota. But anyways, if you really watch that commercial, it's really the imagery is so awesome. Like, I don't have a billion dollars like my, you know, opponent. Very, very great uh, uh, imagery in that commercial. Uh, whoever did it, they have to hire him and, you know, use that same thing. Um, as I said, same with Martha McSallery, kind of interpretive methods. I think no one has to agree with me, by the way, that like one of the reasons why her like, you know, stressing. I think I mean, you know, I'm impressed she was a, a fighter pilot and all that stuff. I mean, that that takes intelligence and all that stuff. But right now, I don't think that the country is by and far, by and large, in the mood for that kind of discord. <laughs> uh, in fact, I think that's why Trump won in 2016. He didn't have a reckoning. He kept on attacking war. He kept on saying George Bush brought us to war, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I think that the country's mood has changed. Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, but, you know, that's how it goes. Uh, what else? What else? Yeah, political ads, secret of the tribe, sting. I said that's interpretive methods. Um, the uh, and then ethnography. Oh, obviously the Lee Atwater story. All that is interpretive methods. What are the wedge issues? Guns, burning of the flag. Um, you know, etc. Uh, do, 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 do. let's take a look. Let's take a look. Yeah, and then ethnography. That's secrets of the tribe. I don't ask about grounded theory. I I left that out because that's a really tough thing to really understand. Uh, they ta tackle it in PhD programs and masters. So I don't know if it's fair in you know a, a short class to really dig deep in. But but regardless, that is what secret of tribes is. You go in with no knowledge into something. It doesn't have to be ethnography, but it often is because you you're studying something where you don't go in with a theory, you don't go in with anything, and you kind of let the data speak to you. But the question is, is a lot of ethics will be on there, like Shagnon. Did he get too involved with the Yamamamo people? If you watch the, really watched it, he was like, you know, throwing the the spear and all that stuff. Or uh, the name's slipping my mind, the guy from Quiet Rage. But did he get too involved in the, um, in the, um, because he was like the warden. So he kind of got involved into the um, research and kind of egged people on now, evidence suggests. So, you know, that kind of ethics. And then obviously the guy marrying a very young girl <laughs> in, in the Yamamoto people is pretty suspect. That's why if you do do research in the IRB, you have to go through the uh, International Review Board now. Uh, and that was one of the reasons, Quiet Rage, um <clears throat> what's it called? Uh, Secrets of the tribe, kind of the ethics in relationships, uh, uh, in research, because, you know, there is a lot of scurrilous <laughs> people involved. Um, I'm not one of them, I swear. So and what else? What else? Any other questions on that? So there's a lot of questions, one point each. Everything I just went over is basically on it. Um, but do you have any questions there where I wasn't clear on? Um, I do have a question. It wasn't, um, it's kind of a little off, but you That's talked fine. about when you uh, go into another society, I'm just curious, um, your opinion, um, because the tribe, the Yamaha tribe, that's what something they did. Um, what do you think about that? Yeah, that's that's very controversial because the question is, you we like to get knowledge, right? So we ethnography is decent. I mean, that one on justice of the graves is an interesting ethnography ethnographic study in Uganda. The problem is, and no one really has a straight answer, when do you cross the line, right? When do you start getting too involved with the people? When do you start, you know, being, quote unquote, imperialist? When do you start, you know, um, and this is a very difficult 
question and answer because Shagnon, they said, you know, was basically allowed biologists to go in once he became friends with the Yama people and start taking blood from them. And, you know, in fact, there's a native tribe in Arizona that doesn't let anyone from ASU in there. They're in the Grand Canyon because like a thousand years ago, they were taking blood and doing um, research on their blood without really telling them what they were going to do. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's tough. And then if we like, enter into societies, you know, let's say we, a researcher into an indigenous society, you know, do we give them, you know, diseases, et cetera. You might remember uh, a long time ago, there was a missionary, a Christian missionary, and he tried to get into this, I know, like island, no one can penetrate off the India, off of India. And they, he was, how do you say, flechado? They, they, they put spears into him and they killed him. Like no one can go on the island. It's pretty interesting. So I, I don't know. I mean, there's there's a lot of um different things. Do we exploit people? I don't know. What else? What else? I don't think you mentioned OJ Simpson. Yeah. Oh yeah, you should put that on there. Okay, I'll put that on there as a thing since uh, uh Amber brought it up. Yeah, that whole that is awesome for law, for life. You know, and I was just in LA. I should have done a video by his house where he killed his wife. If he killed his wife. Okay, he was let go. But anyways, you know that if you just see that one scene, you don't have to watch the whole movie, uh, the whole series. But the series is fascinating how it was all about interpretive methods. Like, what is O.J. Simpson? Is he a hero, the victim of racism that is a hero in, in football and elsewhere? Or is he, you know, an abusive man who just killed his wife? Uh, you know, when they went in and started changing things around in his house, that is just brilliant interpretive methods, right? Get rid of like pictures with strippers and everything else and a cake, et cetera, and put up other things. I mean, the movie did exaggerate, but uh, as you saw that short video, the guy did admit that they did change things around. That's interpretive methods. So that I'll definitely put on the OJ Simpson. Uh, I, I'm, I like it because like I'm older. I remember when that happened. It was very interesting. Um, you know, and then I found out being in L.A. that in fact, other waiters and stuff got killed. So the argument is he didn't do it. The people who support him that. Uh, the the Goldstein guy was actually friends with a lot of drug dealing people that actually did get killed. I don't know. It gets into a big thing. I don't know. I wasn't there. I wish I were because I was living in L.A. for a while. What else? What else? So I'll definitely put that on there. Amber. Great, great question. Anything else? If there's nothing about the the final, it opens tomorrow. I had to move it up to tomorrow morning because we were doing this today. What about the final paper or internship? You you choose. I think some people got confused. Any questions on that? I have a question. Go ahead, Tyler. Um, so you said like at least in the syllabus that it has to be at least five full pages of writing. Right. If you go further than that, is that okay? Or does it yeah, have to be that's like- fine. That's fine. No, you'll never get. Whether we read them or not, that says me. I read it. That that gets into the thing. It's like some of the presentations. You know, someone said, I did a presentation. It was 14 minutes. I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm going to want to listen to the whole 14 minutes, but you could still do it. Um, and remember to get those in. A lot of people see that's the problem when I say I have flexibility on on the assignments. People didn't end up putting it up. Um, get those in. You know, do whatever one you want. I don't care. Do it on OJ Simpson, that little video. Do what you want, but get it in. Uh, as far as the paper does, do anything like a K case study that you think is interesting. Uh, you can do OJ Simpson. People do a lot who want to go to law school. People actually do a lot of uh, law cases. Like why was someone did why Casey Anthony was uh, found not guilty, but Jody Arias was found guilty. But yeah, I mean, you have to be kind of a law a lawyer enthusiast about if you want to do it on that, but you can do it anyways. Why a revolution happened, why it didn't happen, you know, anything you want to do for the, I did put out a lecture for the internship. That's a lot of fun too. I'll give you her email. If you do end up doing it, you still have to upload it, but uh, you, you, that's a kind of an interesting thing. You can do anything you want and just apply it to fake news. Any subject you want, you could do it on the January 6th, you could do it on the environmental issues, you could do it on, you know, woke this or whatever. I mean, it can be a fun paper, and then you just send it off to her, and you'll get the points. Uh, I have one quick question. Do you have, like, a syllabus or a grading scale of how our papers are going to be graded and what we should be paying attention to? Yes. 
I would just say follow what the lectures say. And also there is on the syllabus a thing, but I don't have like, oh, this would get you one point. This would not get you this point. I mean, most people get the points. Uh, my thing is just don't give crap. Uh, I know it's a little crass to say, but that's what you don't want to do because meet the uh, page requirements, uh, you know, and you'll get the full points. It's, it's the thing is I'm not looking for a publishable paper, especially these online classes, particularly in the summer move so quickly. The question is what, what do you expect? And, and, you know, it, there was a lot of information in this class to begin with. So uh, if you do like a decent case study or you do a really good thing on the, on the, on the, uh, on the um, internship, you'll get the points. And you saw, uh, I gave a couple um, examples in the lecture of what's a good internship and also uh, a paper. The paper is very open and people do very creative things. So I wouldn't be too worried about like, oh, are you going to lose a point here or there, you know? For the final paper, sorry, mm -hmm. someone yeah. else going. Um, for the final paper, um, would I be able to like compare uh, the role of propaganda in shaping public opinion between like the Vietnam War versus like Afghanistan, Iraq? Oh yeah, that would be great. I would pick one of those, like Vietnam versus so just, Iraq or Afghanistan okay. or Afghanistan versus Iraq. I definitely that would be a great paper. Like you know, you you just have to lay it out. Just say. This is an interpretive understanding of research, blank, 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 and then you go right into it. So that would be really uh, interesting. So Remember, though, it's only five pages. It, that no, compare, compare and contrast uh, are great papers for research methods because that's basically what it is. You're comparing different variables, different scenarios, different you know, just entities, whatever they are, right? Like, why did we do well in the Korean War, but not Vietnam? Because remember, we pushed the Koreans all the way back to the Yalu River uh, with the help of other countries, uh, whereas Vietnam was was a disaster. Why? So, you know, anything like that, those compare and contrast propaganda for those two wars will be or, you know, how they sold them. Uh, definitely a good, good paper. Would I also be able to compare it to the Ukrainian more than two? Like you would have to limit it. You could definitely okay. do something like that. Uh, if you go on to get a master's or PhD, then you can really do like a master's thesis or something like that on it. Um, you could do, but that, that it, I wouldn't tackle four, you know, like Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, and the Ukraine. That 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 gets into a a, a pretty long paper. Uh, I but I could you could do a couple cases definitely. What you think is interesting, and then do a little footnote on the other that you want to explore later. Like I think this is you know fungible that is applicable to the current Ukraine crisis or whatever. So yeah, those are, that would be a good dissertation. There you go. How we sell different wars, different times. Uh, are we using the same tools? You know, I mean, emotionally speaking, interpretive speaking. So, yeah, definitely. What else Thank do you. we got here? I have uh, another question. Oh. You can go. Okay. Um, Michelle? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Michelle, yep. Michelle, go. You're good. Sorry, sorry. Um, I'm doing my thing on um, how fake news affects U.S. elections. Mm -hmm. Should I specifically use just like one election from like the past or current election or would it would it not be too broad to just do it like in general? You could do it generally. See, that that's the thing. There's many roads to Rome in life. Uh, you could do like just a case study, right? Like the current election, 2016, et cetera. Or you could take a certain theme, just fake news in general, and then see how it's playing out in different elections. Got you. Okay. Oh, and one good thing about fake news, it, it is always there. If you really watch the Lee Atwater boogeyman, they accuse Mike Dukakis's wife of being at a, a, a um, what's it called, at a meeting where they burnt the flag. And they're like, do you have any evidence of this? He's like, no, I don't have any pictures or anything, but she was there. It's kind of like really suspect when people say, well, I don't have evidence, but, you know, she did it. You know, I mean, fake news has always been there. And and how do we measure fake news? For me, that's a, this is an interesting paper because what is fake news, right? I mean, is fake news something I just don't like? It's like, you know, so, you know, are we too sensitive? Uh, I don't know. You know, this is going to be an interesting thing. And one of those or two of those papers I showed in the lecture, they actually define fake news so it was interesting Tyler go ahead 
Okay, um, this isn't about the paper, but it's just about the last week of the course. Um, mm -hmm. Would you recommend doing quiz six before do, taking the final exam? Or Oh, that's a great question. I love <laughs> quiz six. I don't know. I had to like put it down. Uh, you could do, uh, uh, I, I can't, I'm not going to open up the quiz. <laughs> See, the problem is I was letting, this is between us. I was letting students, you know, do it a little couple days after, but then someone actually complained and they said, oh, they can't do that. Everything has to be done by June 26. And I, okay, okay. So I wasn't able to, to give you that like extra time. Uh, so someone like literally went to the dean and was like, oh, Charles is, has something due, like not on the 20, not in this class, but a while back on the 26th. That's why it's kind of crunched like that. So I said, but that's in the student's interest. It was giving them more time. So I'm like, why would someone complain about having more time? But, you know, I, I can't do it. So that's why everything's due on the 26th. That's why I don't know. <laughs> it's like, it depends on, on the typical person. You know? Before I had it a little more space, but now I said, no, you can't. Okay, thank Sorry, you. Sorry, I don't have an answer. <laughs> that's fine. What else? Anything else? I have until the 26th to do the presentation, right? Yeah, but I would definitely get okay. that in as quick yeah. as I would have you going to agree. You can, I mean, I'm going to obviously allow it, but, you know, I, 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 you know, all the discussion boards, I have to be strict on those. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you get it in, you get it in. But, but that's not in your interest either. You, you know, you don't want to wait until like the last. That's why it's, it's bad for me to say, oh, I'm flexible on this. Because then people wait. I was a student too, you know. I mean, I know how it is. Uh, I did the same thing. I even failed a class because of it. Uh, you don't want to get too behind on these uh, things. So I would tr maybe just try to belt something out before the 26th. But yeah, I mean, you can do it by the 26th. But then you've got the, the exam. And as Tyler mentioned, the quiz. And then the uh, final little paper. Whichever you pick, the internship or the... Um, or the uh, paper. Anything else from people? All I have right. One more oh, go ahead. question. Yeah, um, go ahead. This this might sound stupid. Pay money but for this. If, no such thing <laughs> as a stupid question. Um, if we have the grade we want based on the grade we get on the exam and all the discussion boards, do we have to take the last quiz? No, 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 no. That's that's a good question. Some people do really well and they realize they hit a hundred points. And then they just don't do the final, right? A final, you have to do the final exam because that's like thir almost 30 points. But um, then they don't say the paper because it's only worth 10. Let's say you already reached 100. Then you don't have to do the final paper. No, you don't have to. So, you know, it, it goes by your the amount. But I just do it just to do it, right? Let's say you have 100, just do it just in case you made a mistake or something and you did it and just, you know, you get two points. You know, because let's say you get 98 points and you, you know, that's not an A plus. Okay. Um, what? I had, go ahead. Sorry. No, sorry. Go. I had a quick question. Um, just want to make sure because I did my paper on like why the Supreme Court changed this position on, um, I guess, due process at, uh, you know, and what is it? I'm sorry, I'm blanking out. I just did a paper on it. I'm totally blanking out on the case. No, that's fine. You know, Don't do drugs, John. Don't do <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure, you know, that's like a topic that would be good for the paper. You can make sure, as I laid out in the thing, you just relate it to a method, right? Right. right. Like if you do that, say, what's the reason that's an independent variable? I'm going to explore the variables and why they changed. Got it. Yeah. So just make sure you lay out. That is one way that answers kind of Natalie's question. So that's good that you could lose points by not mentioning the method. Got it. Because I did mention like that, you know, it's like cause and effect. It's positivist and it's like oh, process okay. tracing. And Oh, then you'll be fine. OK, got it. Cool. I mean, as long as it's good, I don't want to. You know, yeah. I didn't mean it, so yeah. I don't want to over overstretch there. OK, appreciate it. OK, anything else? Amber, did you want to say something? I'm sorry. I answered my own question. Thank oh, you, good. All right. Thanks for coming out, everyone. I mean, we have a big class. It's like about 100 and only like a few came out. But this is good. If you if you need a recommendation, then you have to say, hey, don't you remember I went to your uh, <laughs> Zoom meeting? You know, because it is tough. I know Amber's not just in uh, online, but some of you are just online. And, uh, you know, it is tough sometimes to get letters of recommendation. That's why I take this kind of opportunity. You get to know people, see people. Well, 
at least your names and and confirm that you're here participating and stuff like that. So I appreciate everyone coming out. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm going to kind of make sure the the final exam kind of reflects everything we talked about today and 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 incorporates all your feedback and all that stuff to make it as doable as possible. But uh, take care, everyone. Thanks so much for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.